welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Katarina Diana. We're going to play something brand new today, a deck we put together on stream. I basically just wanted to play a Katarina deck. It's been a long time since we've played one, and it's a very fun champion to play. Um, you, we get to create the Fleeting Blades Edge in hand, strike with Katarina, level it up, and then we can keep playing it and keep attacking some more. And so I was just kind of looking through the different champions uh, in the game, looking for like, you know, a different champion that we hadn't played uh, with Katarina before and, uh, you know, came across Diana, right? Like we hadn't played, we've never played a Katarina Diana deck before. So I feel like we should probably do that. And I don't know if I've ever seen anybody play a Katarina Diana deck either. So we're going to put them together. It could be pretty cool with Diana having the quick attack challenger and then also the Katarina getting multiple attacks, that could be a cool combination of getting like multiple attacks with a Katarina, with, sorry, with a quick attack challenger and being able to, um, you know, like kill multiple things. Plus, another reason why I want to play Katarina right now is because Blade's Edge is really valuable right now because lots of people are playing Zoe's. There's Zoe is kind of all over the metagame. And so if everybody's playing Zoe, then Blade's Edge is going to be strong of just like the one mana deal one that could be a one mana removal spell for a zoe um so yeah so i kind of wanted to wanted to play a katarina deck so we put this together we'll see how it goes we got a good amount of nightfall stuff for the diana um and uh we have we have uh some aggressive elements like where we can kind of curve out we got like a nightfall elusive um, you know, Nightfall plus two plus zero overwhelm, like getting this five three overwhelm in here. So we can be kind of aggressive with our attacks, but we can still play a pretty good late game. We have like Lunari Priestess that gets to invoke um, for the late game. And then uh, we have these two top end cards that are both awesome. One Eclipse Dragon, two Captain Farron. Um, Captain Farron has been a card that's been killing us um, with all sorts of different decks. And so hopefully we can use the Captain Farron to our advantage this time. Um, Eclipse Dragon, of course, is another Nightfall card that will get some more uh, late game stuff for us. We got pretty decent removal. The Scorched Earth should pair well with the Blade's Edge that Katarina can make, but then also just be good at killing landmarks if we got to do that, or just all of like these little cheap things, like maybe like something here can attack into or block a larger uh, unit or champion that we need to, and then we finish it off with Scorched Earth. So I don't know. We got kind of a little bit of everything. In here we got like good invoke stuff and captain farron and katarina should be pretty fun so let's get to it we'll play five games in rank with this new one katarina diana all right so we're playing against the go hard deck to start with let's see Captain Farron's very good against Go Hard, but we're going to go ahead and mulligan it right away. The Spell Thief is just, like, you know, not a bad card, and it's good at turning on Nightfall stuff. Let's just keep the... Nothing, actually. Let's just send it all back. <laughs> Let's try again. We can keep the two mana card. Um, but yeah, I kind of like something like Diana more. Yeah, channel point prediction is, is up. That fleeting Blade's Edge, good thing for Spacey Sketcher also, if we don't need it. I pull the strings. Guess that's gonna be able to hit us. I, I don't have the ability to get a Nightfall, Diana, and then also a B3 power right now we could use a bite okay that could be a good card yeah i like that here i can just cooling strike and now that turns all my nightfall for diana that's a good use of, of the cooling strike no going back. I think this Katarina is kind of safe 
Like, they can't play two Gohards. They, I mean, they could... Basically, they'd have to play, like, a Gohard right now, and then, like, a Vile Feast after I attack. Um, you know, like, so they, they could do something like that, of use multiple cards to deal with it. Blood for Noxus. Okay, good. Not a... Not a blo block and uh, glimpse beyond. They'll never know what killed them. Okay, cool. Like a fish in water. <laughs> and here's where I paint my constellation. Because I, I don't want to, yeah, why not kill the spider and then attack? Because I don't want to cast the Blade's Edge. I'd rather discard the Blade's Edge to Spacey Sketcher. Or, like, I, I didn't want to actually play Blade's Edge. That's okay. It's okay to have two Katarinas. Like, they kill one, then we'll have the backup. We're fine. Yuppie, I talk to spirits. These are my rules. Okay. I will take that. I will play the serpent that will turn on my knife, my nightfall for Diana. So like, are they just like sitting back wanting to ruination? So as far as like their removal goes, they would rather kill my Diana than kill my Serpent. So I'm gonna put the the card that they don't want to kill on here. Okay, they're just they're just looking at their hand and looking at what I got with Katarina and just saying I don't have a chance. I'm giving up. Katarina Diana already too good for Gohard. Hmm. Ionia. This is going to be, like, basically all Noxus with, like, Deny, maybe? I could see that. So I could see the Scorched Earth being good against, you know, like, a bigger Noxus thing, but we'll have to see. No one's the wiser. We were peaceful. All right, so I, I prefer to have the 2-1 um, turn on the Nightfall for the Diana, and then the Dust turn on the Nightfall for something else. But, of course... Don't always get what we prefer. Hmm. So I want to play Dust Shade Stalker. Give me a great blocker. But I guess I could just play Shade Stalker. I guess it doesn't have to be elusive. I can save the dust for Diana. I can just play it as a 2-3. That's a good blocker. Yours is a light I cherish, Moon Sister. Boo. Alright, so it's not just an eye as far as Ionia goes. It's our time. And I don't want to trade my 2 3 for their 3 2. Because then I want my 2 3 to be able to um, give me a very good block on these 2 1s. Make it so it's tough to attack with those. Good Dustbringer draw. That's good for my Priestess. And I can go that, or I can go Mountain Goat plus Pale Cascade. And I think I go that. I think I'm just going to go with the two Nightfall cards. One. One's not very many. For the money makers. Cool. Discarded a crowd favorite. 
So I got to trade that two drop for their one drop plus a, a crowd favorite. Not bad. I wish I could have Pill Cascade, but I can't. Not yet. I'm sorry, MC Twitchy. There's nothing wrong with the spider deck. Spider deck's pretty cool. Alright, let's go with the goat. And I kind of want to just keep both Pale Cascades up instead of playing the Shade Stalker. Because it's either like one Shade Stalker and one Pale Cascade or two Pale Cascade. Yeah, I'll just pass. No, maybe I should have played Shade Stalker, because I, I guess I can't block everything. Yeah, I, I guess I should have played Shade Stalker and blocked, and then just had one kill cascade. Yeah, I should have played Shade Stalker. Yep, mistake by me. Should have played the Shade Stalker. Now, now I have to block with the Diana. That's alright. We got another, like, this is gonna be another Diana. So we're down to just one single card in hand. Just one. Oh, what have they played as far as spells go? Have they played any spells? They played Concussive Palm. Concussive Palm could be awesome against them, too. I think that's it, right? Just Concussive Palm? Like, Spinning Axe? I don't know. If yeah, they played that. Yes, MC Twitchy. Pirate ag aggro is definitely much easier to play than the Scar Grounds deck. Forgive me. Time for the main event. Cuss of Palm saving me here. We will resist. Now we're cooking. All right, they're gonna level up. They had a vision for the other cards. They're gonna level up their their Draven. Okay, so how do we... We have to make sure... Or we have to try... I guess make sure is difficult. We have to try to have it so we don't die next turn to these two things. Ah! Whirling Death. What a draw. Delicious. 
that Whirling Death is perfect. Um, very small sample, because it's just one game sample, but one game sample, the Scorched Earth, looks pretty bad. I will be heard. But it's just a one game sample. Forgive me. This is gonna hurt for you. Look at that Whirling Death. Killing, killing the Draven, and we killed the, the Darius, kill them both. <laughs> Gotta use the Draven fist pump. Yes. And now, they if they play like a Darius this turn, we got the stun card with the Crescent Strike. Just a little house spider. Don't need to stun that, of course. We don't want any trouble. Don't want any trouble. All in this. All right, there's Captain Farron doing the ending. And GG's. Katarina Diana looking pretty sweet. That was a clutch spell thief. Um, the Scorched Earth didn't look so good. But besides that, everything else was great. Oh, another Katarina deck. They're going to be all frostbitten and everything. Frostbite's a good deck. Let's see. You can go... I mean, I, I would love to have turn 8 Captain Farron, but I guess we should uh, mulligan look for our early stuff to help turn on our two Nightfall cards in hand. Katarina. We march as one, an unstoppable force. So I could just... Oh, I can't even ca you can't I can't even cast Spell Thief. I can't even just like throw it away to turn on Nightfall. That's a bummer. I was gonna say that I could just throw it away to turn on Nightfall, but I guess that's actually not even something I can do. Hello. I am not allowed. Let the bloodshed begin. To victory! Blood for Noxus. My pleasure. If this works, as long as they don't have, as long as they don't have Brittle Steel, this will pick up the Katarina. Um, if they have Brittle Steel, the game, like they probably win the game. Okay. That one we're, we're basically at even now, um, but you know, like they're they're ahead obviously because they dealt three damage to me and they have the three two in play. So, but I mean they, the turn was like even for us. Um, what did they play? They played Elixir of Iron. Got it. Maybe we're not a good Scorched Earth deck. Not as good as I was thinking and or hoping. I'll take an Elixir of Iron, I guess. Alright, cool, McTwitchy. Yep, I'll see you later. Why do you fight? You didn't even tell me why in the first place. I'm not supposed to remember. Alright, invoke cards. Let me do my thing.
As the moon rises, quiet reflection begins. Quickness deployed. You were misguided. Oh, you're interesting. Put a four. I could also, you know, like block the three one in Elixir of Iron by Diana. And you know, make make Diana a two four and then block here. Um, and then stay at seven. But I think I'd rather have that for this Golden Sister. Because if I do that, then I only have one additional mana for next turn. And so then whenever I play Golden Sister with one mana, I don't have Elixir of Iron anymore. So I wouldn't have Elixir of Iron or Pale Cascade. I wouldn't have either one available. No, we have, we have some damage based removal. I mean, we have... Yuck. We have a couple of damage-based removal spells. The world awaits. Forward. What tidings from the sky? Go. Victory requires a sharp blade. Noxus! You're mine! Safeguard our homes! Arrows at the ready! I bow to no one! Ignorant thrall! <laughs> okay, let's see. So this puts me to five. Their Sejuani's at 2 out of 5 right now. I Options are I can hush the Sejuani to not have any overwhelm damage happen there. I can also Pale Cascade plus Elixir of Iron, this Golden Sister, to keep it alive. Um, which is kind of where I'm leaning towards. I think that's what I want to go with. Which, of course, I, I didn't need to play the hush, right? Like, so that was a bad use of my hush there. And, yeah, I should have just done that because then it would have been 6-6 six, six, and then so the 5-1 quick attack wouldn't have mattered. And then I, they do they do that, that brother's bond and then I hush afterwards. Um, so, yeah, that was a bad use of the hush by me. Yeah, that was that was a very bad use of the hush. Yeah, that's that's going to cost me this game. Because I, I should have, like, that 4-3 life steal still in play right now. Uh, I guess it would be a 4-1. Four, four, but I could still have the 4-1 life steal in play if I would have just waited and not cast the hush when I did. I was too impatient. I just cast the hush immediately and then thought of what to do instead of just thinking what to do first and then casting my cards. I was too impatient. So if I play Farron, there's a good chance we die. It's pretty hard to play fair in this turn with them having Katarina. But it's basically that or like throw away something to Priestess. You know, basically like cast Katarina and then cast Priestess. That's why it was difficult to play the the Farron because if they just played you know like like that like a three one and then Katarina we lose. But I I should have had the four three out still like that was my that was my bad. I messed that game up there with the uh, playing the hush first. Um, Brothers Bond not a card I was expecting though like that kind of deck I don't I basically I don't know if I've ever really seen that kind of deck play Brothers Bond that was a big uh, big surprise and um, yeah that was a big surprise and they got me with it. All right, Zoe, Aurelian Soul. I do have to say that I've been pretty happy with our deck so far. Um, you know, pretty satisfied with it. The Scorched Earth hasn't looked the best, but um, you know, like this is a, a deck we just made today. It's kind of like a first, first try at it, and I've been I've been very satisfied with how it's looked. You know, it's a two-one with uh, me making a mistake. Even if I don't make that mistake, though, 
the the chance of us winning that game is still pretty low. Like, Frostbite's good against decks that are trying to attack, like we are with this Katarina Diana deck. But I could have, you know, put myself in a better spot. Um, not necessarily. Gucci says after turn eight that we lose. Like, I think talking about this matchup, and, and not necessarily because we have the Captain Farons and the Katarinas. Both of those two cards can um, can be very impactful after turn eight. So we'll have to see. Good spaces catcher. Very good spaces catcher. Okay, to get those predictions in if you want. May have ran out of time. So it's a good Mountain Goat attack right now. Create this gem. Where's our Scorched Earth now? <laughs> I want that Scorched Earth now. Where, where's it at? Maybe that should be Crescent Strike. But you can see why Solari Priestess is so good, right? Like, Solari Priestess, you get three amazing options every time. With, like, the Lunari Priestess, like, yeah, the one mana four one's good, but it's not, you know, the four through six kind of card's good. So this is the problem, like, I want to play Katarina and have the Blade's Edge kill the Zoe, but the problem here, of course, is if I do that, they just challenge my Katarina with the Solari Priestess. So then I can do that next turn, but then we're not playing the Warrior. Hmm. I can play, like, the gem on my 2-1 right now, so I can make these both three powers so they don't get a free kill. So I was kind of planning on going like with just the fervor. I think I'm gonna do that. Is just go with the fervor. My spirit shines. Ship time. They don't have a whole lot of stuff in their deck that the fervor is gonna kill. Plaza's messed up. <laughs> Man, that card's messed up. That This is a great trade for me. I get to trade my three mana card for their four mana card plus a single combat. The thing is, that's a great trade for me, but still... Um, you know, they still have the Grand Plaza, and they still have like their invoke cards and everything. It's going to be difficult to beat the Grand Plaza. Stars like jewels on the cloak of night. So they wanted me to play something like to make a good challenge, but I mean, it's just a 2-1. Okay, so now they have three mana. Can I afford to get the Trickster out here? hope so. But who knows, maybe they'll play something that challenges the Trickster. Hopefully not. Hopefully pass. Just a little something I like to call fun. Nope. No pass. Just zero mana 4-4 four, four challengers over here. Basically, basically a five mana card, a 4-4 four, four challenger. You know, like Razor Scale Hunter. Um, you know, like Five Man has the 5 4 Challenger, the 4 5 Challenger, both those like Demacia cards. You know, 
There's no four mana card that's a four four challenger, that's for sure. So it's between a four and a five mana worth of a card for zero <laughs> because of these bosses. It's crazy. So the problem with gem, even though, you know, it was likely they're gonna be challenging the trickster, but the problem with the gem is if I'd use the gem, then they could just play the priestess. Yeah. <laughs> Blades Edge V Plaza. Like, the best thing that Blades Edge could do for us, like, if I would wait, would be, like, take out the uh, Spell Shield for Aurelian Soul. I wanted to just get the leveled up or, uh, le leveled up Katarina in hand. That's what it, like, that's why I'm playing the Katarina right now. I wanted to get the leveled up Katarina in hand. So I can no always, like, deploy this way. when needed. I don't necessarily need to deploy it right away. But I always have that option of whenever I need it, I can deploy it. Of course, I whenever I played it, I didn't know that they would have another Zoe. We we took out one Zoe. I didn't know they had another. The moon approaches her zenith. May her silver light enshroud us. Man, that is so insane. I'll break the, siege. the hour is mine. Yes, I think I will really need that one mana. I don't think that. Yes, I, I do think, especially. Like, yes, I, I do think that saving that mana and not playing that Blade's Edge is worth it. So they have two cards in hand. We know one is the card they got from Star Shaping. They have one seven plus mana Celestial card. They didn't grab the three mana stun two units. If they grabbed that card, I'm in trouble. I mean, I'm already in trouble, obviously, but like that card probably ends the game. And they're. Yeah, I was hoping to be like Equinox or something they play right now because. Because I want to play the five mana challenger. And then be able to challenge, play Katarina, attack again, and, chal and challenge again. We have a lot of options here. And finding the exact one that is going to win the game is challenging. I'm going to go with just the attack with Captain Farron. You are beneath me. Okay. Don't leave. So we got a hush out of their hand. Golden. That's really bad, because that, that means a fight spell. Like, the only reason to play that right now is that you have a fight spell. So since, you know, with them having a fight spell, now that that's going to make my life more difficult. Never. But I have to, like, that's what they're telling me. Like, we know that one of their cards... Okay, never mind, I guess they don't. Okay, I was going to say, we know that one of their cards is this... Because they still have the 7 plus mana card that we don't know about, right? Like, they still have the 7 mana card from the star shaping. They, they never played that. So they just cast this with no... 
Like, why would they not just wait, like, with, like, these grand plazas and then also get the lifesteal with it and everything? Yeah, that card. They still have that card. That's the card from Star Shaping. They drew really, really well and had really good. They drew really well, had really good invokes, had Grand Plaza. Everything went pretty perfect for them that game. Thanks, Scorcher. Thanks for showing up now. Against the Anivia deck where I don't need you. I appreciate that. Alright, gonna keep this Captain Fair in it that we're probably gonna need against this Anivia deck to finish the game out. This is gonna be. Um, a difficult one to finish the game out with, so I'm going to keep this Captain Farron. We were peaceful once. I'm going to play the Mountain Goat on turn two. If we didn't have Mountain Goat in hand, I would probably just wait until turn two and then play Duskbringer with Pale Cascade backup. But uh, we have the Mountain Goat, so since I'm going to want to play the Mountain Goat on turn two anyway, might as well play this Duskbringer on turn one. I mean, it depends. The question is, like, do we hard lose this matchup? I mean, it basically depends. Like, if, if they have, like, a really, really good Anivia hand, you know, like, Anivia on six and um, all the ways to rebuy Anivia, you know, like, that kind of stuff, it's going to be difficult for us to win. We don't we don't stop Anivia. But that's not that's not 100% of the games they play. If they just play, like, a more control kind of game and they don't have, like, the fast Anivia and fast kill with Anivia and Harrowing and that kind of stuff, they don't have that immediately and just have, like, more of a control kind of deck, um, we can maybe win that with Farron. So, like, that's what's going to depend upon. No, I mean, they, yeah, they, they have a good amount of Nexus healing because they're going to be playing Withering Will, Grasp the Undying, Vile Feast, Unspeakable Horror, you know, the, the Kindly Tavern Keeper. So yeah, they'll be heal healing their Nexus quite a bit. Um, and so yeah, that, that's that's another good way to stop us with the uh, Decimates. And I, I, want to, I don't want to play anything because of Avalanche. I don't want to play anything first. I want to just uh, go immediately to attacks. Catalyst Veyon's healing also. The Immortal Fire is my best card, but it also just costs eight, just like Captain Farron. Um, I'm still going to take it, though. It's it's the best card there. It's a little awkward how it also costs eight. So I know I'm not attacking them right now. But I'm just playing this Katarina to kind of get it out of my hand and you basically use me out of this turn. Unfortunately, they did have that avalanche that I was worried about. Um, let's see, six mana. To play this again, like vile, vile feast and withering whale and that kind of stuff. Let's get the uh... man. Stop healing your nexus. Stop. So you are a three-three. The moon is our queen. The night, her kingdom. So not grasp the undying. That's good. 
Next turn for me is turn seven, so not quite Farron and or Immortal Fire yet. But I will be able to play the Katarina. They go in Ruination. Ruination, like, you know, just isn't the worst thing for me with having these eight drops next turn. Yeah, like, this This honestly went pretty good for us. We had a really good hand. This went pretty well for us, even with them having... You know, like, they had, they had a good hand as well. Um, you know, even with them having what they had. I could make it lethal with Pale Cascade. It's just how would I want to make a lethal with Pale Cascade? I don't know yet. We'll do this and kind of figure out what they got. Okay, they have that. Our light grows brighter. Cool. Her light across the land. So our tech honestly looked pretty sweet. So we ended up going three and two. Um, you know, we run into ran into like a, a tough loss there with the Grand Plaza and I don't know, whatever our other loss was, but I really liked our deck. I think it was it was fun to play, and I think that both Diana and Katarina um, ended up being like good champions for us and everything. I think our deck was pretty good. The The one card that wasn't as good for us was Scorched Earth. The one matchup where we really needed it was that game four against the Grand Plaza. That's why I kind of have a three Scorched Earth in here because of how good the Grand Plaza is. Um, but unfortunately, they had two Grand Plazas and I had zero Scorched Earths and that was very messy. But I really liked our deck. I think that uh, like the, t the top end with the Captain Farron was good. Um, just having like all these like little cheaper things was pretty sweet. And then... Uh, you know, like the extra attacks of the Katarina. Like, this was pretty cool. You know, something that's different that nobody else is playing. Diana, Katarina. I liked our deck. Moving forward, though, that's like the, the thing to do is like figure out like, do we need three Scorched Earth? Can we do something better with that? Do, should we play more like Noxion Fervor, Whirling Death, or is there, you know, better removal? You know, like, do we play like Sunburst? I don't know. Like, we, you know, like, what do we do with like these like little like removal slots here? You know, I went with the one Whirling Death, one Culling Strike, one Fervor, because. Each one you kind of want at different times, and then the three Scorched Earth. Um, you know, that's that's the thing to do, is figure out what do you want to do with those slots um, moving forward. But uh, besides that, I really liked the rest of the deck. Just maybe maybe figure out some better uses uh, for those couple of slots. But it looked good. All right, that's Katarina Diana. Pretty cool little deck here with some fun champions. And uh, another way to play Katarina, because we haven't played that much Katarina recently. All right, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Leave those comments. If you give this deck a try yourself, let me know how it goes. If you do give it a try and um, maybe have something else that you kind of experience while you're playing the games of like maybe another card that you'd rather play over all three Scorched Earths, let me know in the comments. I'd love to, to hear that feedback. Um, but yeah, like I'd, I'd be pretty confident in playing this deck and ranking up with this one here in Masters Rank. Like, you know, like we went three and two this time, but, you know, play, you know, another five games. I'd be pretty confident in going three and two again and just kind of continuing that pace and uh, maybe finding uh, some other stuff to do with those last couple of slots and uh, retune those. But I liked it. All right. But that's all I got here for Katarina Diana. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.